As the late journalist and author Charles Geralt wrote in his book, On the Road, Loving County is the emptiest county in the United States. It covers 669 square miles and has a population of 91 persons. That's about one lonely soul for every seven square miles. It is in that place, in the town of Mentone, where James Jackson Wheat lived and grew rich on the pools of oil beneath his feet. J.J., as he was known, was born in 1916 and left this earth in 1989. His father, who had the same name as J.J., brought in his first well in 1924. He had wildcatted several more productive wells, leaving his heirs very wealthy. J.J., being one of those heirs, drove a series of Rolls-Royce and Mercedes-Benz automobiles, mainly to move his herd of 300 cattle across his rugged property in Loving County. Although it rarely rained, and there were no other good sources of water, the oil man had water hauled in so that he could keep a few cattle around for a tax deduction, as he explained it. Over a span of ten years, J.J. acquired scores of Texas-style spurs, including the largest known group of rare Swede Strong spurs known to exist. He mainly relied upon a couple of knowledgeable dealers in Texas and Oklahoma to locate bits and spurs for him. And when they did, J.J. paid them for their fines with wads of cash pulled from his pockets. Carl Jennings of Tulia, Texas, was one of Wheat's most trusted buyers. Jennings said that toward the end of the collector's life, Wheat asked him what he should do with his bits and spurs. Since his family did not share J.J.'s interest in the collection, Jennings recommended that he donate the collection to the National Ranching Heritage Center. In November 1985, Wheat gave the Ranching Museum 920 pairs and singles and more than 100 bits. This exhibit shows many of the best pieces from that collection. Guadalupe Garcia was born in Sonora, Mexico in 1864. In 1883, he opened a shop in Santa Margarita, California, then moving to Elko, Nevada. He designed in the elaborate California style. He was the most artistic of any spur maker of his time. His work had an international audience with buyers from as far away as Argentina, Australia, and France. Garcia taught others the art of spur making, many becoming talented spur makers themselves. He turned G.S. Garcia Bit and Spur Company over to his sons in 1932 and retired to Salinas, California, the state where he had learned to make the ornate spurs that became his trademark. He died of a kidney ailment in 1933. Harold Swede Strong was born in Sweden in 1887. Strong ran away to America after his mother died. Strong, tall, intelligent, and big-hearted, he was hired while still in his teens as a stonemason. His employer was the company in Chicago that built the Texas State Capitol Building. Strong became a U.S. citizen so he could enlist in World War I. He received training as a blacksmith and then cowboyed at the Oliver Loving Ranch near Rotan, Texas. He became like a big brother to Loving's great-granddaughter, Mrs. Mabel Brown. He later opened the Pecos Saddle Shop, creating award-winning saddles, but a few spurs, perhaps as little as 49 pairs. Mrs. Brown took care of Sweet in his final years, burying him in her family's plot in Baird, Texas. A native of Hanover, Germany, Beermann came to America in 1863. He apprenticed with saddlery hardware manufacturer Alexander Barclay & Company in New Jersey, buying the company in 1866. Ten years later, he employed 35 skilled workmen. Beermans was among the first firms in the United States to make bits and spurs. Orders came from throughout the world because of his patented features. In 1902, he moved the company to a four-story brick building. He brought his sons into the Beerman Manufacturing Company and expanded his line to include marine and automotive hardware before World War I. He sold the business in 1926 to North and Judd, who kept Beerman Designs in production for another decade. Adolf R. Byers was born near Truscott, Texas, and learned spur making in his father's farm shop. He made his first spurs in 1930. Adolf Byers married in 1948 and began making spurs for polo players in the 1950s. 
he purchased some of the equipment previously belonging to McChesney. Noted for his exceptional silver work, Byers was not particularly open to discussing his work. In fact, he took as his only protege Billy Clapper. Byers kept meticulous records, preserving all of his original quotes and customer orders. Other than four years on the USS Kitty Hawk in World War II, Byers never left the family farm, dying there of cancer at age 65. Though his fame spread far and wide, he always considered spur-making a sideline job to farming.